So Apple's Pro lineup is more streamlined than ever before. It's actually really focused and really good. Apple iPhone 13 Pro, really good. Apple iPad Pro, quite good. Apple MacBook Pro, really good. Apple AirPods Pro, literally the benchmark for noise cancelling headphones. But then, we really can't include the Mac Pro today, because how much ever as an engineering moral it is, being over-engineered, it's just the fact that running an Intel chip in 2021 isn't really a good thing on Macs. So, we can see that M1 is really superior, at least the M1 family with the M1 Pro, M1 Max and the M1 is far superior than their Intel counterparts. And today we're going to be going down leak lane to see what we can expect on future Mac Pro models with in-house Apple Silicon. So first up, let's look at the integral part, like what chip is going to be based inside it. From what we can know, the internal code names for the next generation of chips is something like uh, Ibiza, Hobos, and Palma. While these are actually different from the other generation or other family of chipsets made, being made for the newer MacBook Pro models, which are going to be called Rhodes. Yeah, the code names are really confusing on Apple's models, but. What we can actually expect is that some of these chipsets will actually come in with two dies and be fabricated on the fine animator process from TSMC and while some others are going to be fabricated with four dies and on the tiny three nanometer process which is going to really improve efficiency as well. We don't know how powerful it is, we, can, we just know like on what kind of a base it's going to be built on and the fabrication but we don't know its performance yet, but what we can actually expect is that it's gonna be way performant than the M1 Max or somewhat similar to it, depending upon how it comes down. Now, let's talk about how it's actually gonna be fitted inside the Mac Pro, because let's be honest, Apple has an obsession with shrinking a lot of things. And by the looks of it, this new Mac Pro is gonna be shrinking a lot. Like, it's gonna shrink this big of a Mac Pro to this, which is not a problem, but Apple doesn't really have a nice record of shrinking things without a problem. Now, before we get into the bad stuff, what we can actually say is that Apple really wants to go into this shrinking market, like the Apple iPhone mini and the MacBook Air and the Apple Watch SE if that really counts, but we can also include the iPad mini as well. Now, Apple's problem of shrinking is evident, and but the most popular of all of these is the Mac G4 Cube and also the very infamous 2013 Mac Pro. Now, the last of all of these, the Mac Pro and the Mac G4 Cube, both of them have had their own issues on being shrinking. So, for example, take the Mac Pro from 2013. Well, you know how big of a tragedy it was. Like, the computer was extremely expensive. It was like starting at three, three grand, and many people like thought that this was prosumer stuff. Like, and it was prosumer stuff. Unless Phil Schiller came on stage and he said this. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. <laughs> Yeah, that's not really a good sign to address your product and by the looks of it and especially the fact that it was gonna be small Nobody asked for a small computer from Apple, but they eventually did it. But hey people were like alright fine Power Macs were really powerful. This is gonna be the same Except that a lot it had a lot of issues first up the thermal core was a big fat joke Even though it was present in the center it did not really provide a lot of cooling Especially considering how powerful you can actually configure this Mac Pro it was prone to overheating for a lot of times and expandability was another joke because let's be honest more having more than two gpus was a problem on that mac pro and it had a port problem again and there used to be like tons of dongles and cables coming out from it it felt ugly it was a classic example of form over function and the mac g4q well that has had its own problems as well which are quite similar but the whole point that i'm trying to make over here is that 
Apple's shrinking problem, shrinking thinness, or shrinking sizes, shrinking thinness. It's it's like it's like Apple's addiction. Apple's design team is its fundamental core and big fat value for the company. But what I'm trying to say is that if Apple wants to give out to its prosumers, it should be something like the Mac Pro. Like it shouldn't compromise anything for its form factor size. If it still does, Apple's gonna face a ton of backlash nine years later once again. From what I can say is that uh, Apple Silicon will be quite capable. And if you remember the Mac Mini and the M1 iMac, you might think of this as a big fat relief and so did a lot of people have relief because the Mac Mini was such a small computer but then like when you accustomed to the fact that it was being sold cheap and at the same time it had the new M1 processor it just meant that Apple was improving and being efficient at the same time while also keeping costs down and you can already say how M1 was great as a, as an overall computer package so when you take that into account and also the fact that Apple also shrunk the width of the IMAX by yes actually fitting the whole thing in the chin but the whole point that I'm trying to make over here is that if you saw the logic board with like everything from the RAM and the M1 chip integrated it wasn't this big like the Intel x86 models this was this big and this is not at all big and if Apple wanted to they could have put it behind but yeah design choices again so far shrinking on these Apple M series in house silicon has been really going good and from the looks of Apple's Mac Pro also joining the line it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference it's just exciting and also kind of warning at the same time because we really can not trust Apple with shrinking a lot of things but Let's see what happens.